oh dang you should have recorded before that i know darn it well it's on well, we're already live so <laughs> hey guys it's jenny wallach with the wallach group keller williams realty in tulsa oklahoma i'm so excited to hang out with some friends today and chat about tactic four from shift and that is called find the motivated lead generate yay <laughs> Well, I'm going to let you guys uh, introduce yourself. Say, Shell, why don't you go first and just share where you are and how you got in this biz. And I know, I mean, I was originally just picking people who had experienced the last shift. And I know you guys have been in the biz a while. So are you saying just, we're old? Hey, I'm older, so you're good. No, yeah. it's, it's that we're just so naturally mature. Yes, we look <laughs> really, we look really convincing at our. <laughs> we'll share a little bit about what you got going on there in Dallas. Hi, so I'm coming to you physically right now from my kitchen, um, but when I'm not in my kitchen, we operate in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, um, and we have a team called Vampool Properties here with KW, and uh, we also have an expansion location in Austin, and um, we actually, um, I'm in business with my mom and uh, 16 other amazing real estate agents and admin on our team. We did 97 million in sales last year for 288 home sales, um, and uh, the interesting part about our team is my mom, AKA Barbara, who's awesome, um, actually got her real estate license on September like 11th, 2001. And awesome. so that was our first day in real estate was actually when the world stopped and we had to figure out how to find the motivated. And then I was super brilliant and got in in 2004 and was a buyer's agent when it was a seller's market. And then I was super smart and shifted to a seller's agent right is like a month before our market turned into a buyer's market. So um, in 08, so that was also a brilliant move. So for the first like seven years of my career, I was actually never on the easy side of a transaction. Um, yeah. And I think that actually like uniquely equips us if you're new and getting into this business or newer into the business that uniquely equips you actually to really thrive during this period of time. And I'll let Nick introduce himself next. But, yeah. yeah, so you... It makes sense to uh, establish and have a little bit of grit is what you're saying. Yeah. I didn't actually know what an easy home sale was. Yeah. Like 2013, I think. I think was my first easy home sale. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Nick, what, what about you? So uh, my name's Nick Waldner. I'm on the other side of the country in Maryland. Um, we've got a, an office just south of Baltimore and then an expansion office about an hour west of there as well. We cover just about everything in Maryland from the Western coast to the Eastern coast. So if you think Maryland, we got you covered. Um, I've been growing up in the shadow of Seychelles for a long time and it's just no different here. Uh, I'm impressed with everything she does and I just wanted to come on here because I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I don't so you, it, but... you, got in, you got in business and uh, have experienced a shift in a market in your when, life. Nick, when did you get into real estate? I've been in the business for 18 years and uh, I can tell you very equivalently that my business didn't really grow until the last probably five years. My first 12 or 13 years, it was very much like I sold 38 homes and then 36 homes and then 40 homes and then 37 homes and then 41 homes. And I was just kind of at this ceiling the entire time. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking at things differently. You know, The Shift was a great book, MREA. Those are all the things that I turned to and said, look, they've already got models. Stop trying to be smarter than the other people around you and just do what they're doing. And that's all I've done. So people like uh, Seychelles and, and agents all over the country, I spend time with them. I understand what's working for them. And then I just incorporate it. And, I, and I, I'm very quick about uh, initiating it into our business. So we've done great. I think we were just under 110 million last year for 360 or 80 properties, something like that. That's we have uh, 11 properties under contract this week. This week and it's only Thursday. So we're awesome. killing it. We're, we're feeling very good. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate you guys because um, it's just so important that we hang out and watch and do what the leaders are doing. And we know that all of us have coaches. We know that we all have accountability and we follow our schedules. We get all that. And now with this new market, we get to, I don't know about you guys, have you just been in adrenaline overdrive of how to shift and what to do and what matters most? And let's just dive into that. So 
we got to figure out what doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. I heard on James Shaw, he's doing that morning uh, pivot shift. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. theory. Mm -hmm. And the, this morning, a lady mentioned that they just took their 2020 GPS and set it aside and they created a pivot GPS, which I mm -hmm. thought was brilliant. I wrote it down right here. So uh, what have you guys done to just act fast and get into action? Well, you know, I think, I think the first part is controlling the beginning of the day, right? We can control how we start and you can't always control your first thought, but you can always control your second. And I think we have to get, really understand that that's where a lot of our clients are too right now as their first thought might be, I'm really freaked out. And so it's our job in lead generation and caring and serving. Like I, I'm so thankful to be on this with Nick and with you, Jenny, because I think all three of us come from a place of a servant heart and from wanting to help people first. And when I went back through and looked through our database, right? And I looked through our like book of closed business, it is sphere of influence, local business owners, past clients and agent to agent referrals are our top four sources. Now then behind that is Yelp and other things, right? And online reviews and online lead generation and open houses. But the top four all center around one key thing, which is people. And to me, like the best thing that we can do is not worry about how many like buyers and sellers I have immediately, but how many people am I caring for? Because in the last shift, honestly, we wrote out the last shift by doing short sales for executives, for people who had lost their jobs that hadn't even told their spouses they'd lost their jobs yet. Like it was not, that was Quinn. Um, it was not a like, oh, we've just got deals flying around all over the place. You kind of go through this moment of like, I have to care first and give second and business will come third. And that's really what we pivoted to is how many people can we love on per day? How many people can we serve per day to help them? Because that's what's gonna matter most. If they have a roof over their head, food in their pantry, right? Toilet paper in their bathroom, let's start there. And then we can grow with, with the business second. That's awesome. How are you feeling with all this, Nick? So I actually love it. I'm very excited by it. I'm very pumped by it. I think that we were in this kind of gluttony state of real estate was not that hard. Things were selling very easily. Anybody could show up and do it. Yeah. And you started to lose some of the professionalism that, that caused us to be really good at what we did. And then we got lazy, we got slower, we got you know unworried about little things. And I think anytime we have something like this to really bring the focus down and really have us you know, get our mind going in the right direction, I think there's nothing but success on the other side of this. So one of the things that we pivoted on my team is we do a Zoom call every morning at 8.30. Mm -hmm. The entire team's on there. We talk about what's relevant, what's going on, what's working for people, what hasn't worked for people. And then we set goals for the day. So what is your goal? I'm going to contact 30 people, or I'm going to reach out to 10 people on Facebook, or I'm going to follow up with every past client. My goal is to do 50 of them today. And all of that is the same. Our script is the same all day long. It's the Adele script. You guys know the Adele script? Let's hear it. Hello. How are you? That's it. I thought Everything. you were going to sing for us. <laughs> I, know. I was like, yes, do it. <laughs> Everything we do is about, hey, how are you? Yeah. What can we do for you? Is everything good? How are you and your family getting through all this? And the conversations are so easy. It's so right. basic. But people aren't going to remember what you say. They're going to remember how you made them feel. That's so right. this is your opportunity to build a deeper trust with people just by being human and just by checking in. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference is when we were busy and commuting and running around, we had all this stuff going on. We called two people a day, five people a day. Now we're calling 50 people a day. Yep. So imagine what our pipeline looks like three months, six months, nine months from now. So yep. when, when you said, hey, I took my, my GPS and I threw it out and I got a, I got a pivot, mm -hmm. what I would say is, is I still want to hit my same goals. Mm -hmm. I don't want to change anything. But what I want to realize is that if I was selling, you know, on average, the, uh, any agent on our team was selling three deals a month, and then we hit this slowdown, and whether it's one, two, or three months worth, when we come out to the other side of this, I want to have a pipeline where we're hitting five and six deals right. every single month mm -hmm. so that our year still ends up being a fantastic year because the, what's being pent up right now in terms of, of desire to move 
is only growing more and more. It's already a seller's market. There's already too, bu too many buyers for sellers right now. And now you have all these sellers that are gonna wait and hold to put their house on the market. You're gonna have an explosion of real estate during the, the second half of this year. And that's where we're gonna make up all our goals. You know, and it's interesting because our market's a little different. We started shifting in 2018 here in Dallas. And so there actually was a Wall Street Journal article in um, actually over Thanksgiving of 2018 that said the housing boom is coming to an end and it starts in Dallas. Mm. So like, thanks guys, you guys are great. Um, but our, like our luxury market is already full on into a shift. Um, and so for those sellers, right, and now you've got your uh, jumbo rates increasing, right, and your money being pulled for your jumbo loans. And so we actually view right now with this little tiny market that's going on is actually a micro opportunity for a lot of our clients that we're thinking of like pulling back and waiting. We're actually doubling down and leaning in to get on the market as fast as possible because what happened was, get this, so in the last seven days we had... Um, 30% of our inventory go off the market, okay? So we had 30%, or sorry, we had a 30% increase in our canceled and expired. It's not our entire inventory. 30% canceled and expired go off the market. We also had a 33% decrease of new homes going on the market, but the difference was we only had a 14% decrease in number of contracts written. Wow. And so if you look at that to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, we have this because Nick, you said this too, right? Know your numbers, know your market, right? That's where our professionalism counts. When you know your numbers and we're looking at the inventory and how many homes are under contract on a daily basis right now, on Monday, we saw those numbers and went, holy cow, we picked up the phone and started calling our sellers going, you need to get on the market right now. We need to get photos done right now because the inventory just tanked and the pent up buyer demand is still there. And that wasn't the case 30 days ago. Yeah. And so by paying attention and by knowing your numbers, that helps you then when you are giving the Adele script, right? Of the hello. And they ask how the market is. You can then consult with your clients to make the best educated decision for where they are, regardless of whether you're in the Baltimore market or in the Dallas market, right? You can make a great educated decision about what you need to do to take advantage of the market at hand. So the reason that you are compelled to listen to that and compelled to believe everything she's saying is because it's not emotional talk. It's facts and figures. It's taking yes. the emotions and getting us back to a place of logic. So right. like on our 830 call every single day, we look up in every county how many properties went live and how many properties went under contract. And every day it's the same, you know, 72 properties went live and 92 of them went off the market pending or under contract. Yes. And I do that with every single county. We knock those out really quickly and everybody on the team realizes there's still a lot of real estate being done right now. Yes. People are still listing, people are still buying. Why shouldn't it be us? Right. And you know, our job is not to make the decision for that client. Our job is to give them the information so they can make the educated decision for them and their family. And this is when we shine. This is when like we are at our best, honestly. And this is where the advantage of being somewhere like Keller Williams hey, Nick. Have. <laughs> from hey. one Nick to another. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it was our anniversary yesterday. Very cool. Um, uh, building Legos, don't worry about it. He said we're building Legos. <laughs> um, you're the best. Thank you. Um, but that that's where that's where our opportunity to thrive, like you were talking about, Nick, and why you're so excited, right? That's where this is our opportunity that a lot of the people that just had deals fall in their lap because they had a family member that needed to buy or sell a house, and you can do three or four of those a year, like and it's convenient, changes to where those people may not do that as much anymore. And it's mm -hmm. going to be the ones that are willing to get in and roll our sleeves up and get going. That's going okay. So, so we got the, we got the care calls. Everyone has understood that that those, those are the, that's the script. Hello. How are you doing? That's the script. Okay. So from there, we also have the message and the method. So what other message, we know the message, we've just shared it, know your numbers. And then that's the conversation that you're having with people is here's the reasons why. Um, it's still a good time if you're needing to make a move. And so what else are you sharing through your social sites, your emails to your, to your database? What are those looking like? Everybody's doing their calls. What else are you sharing? So, so I'll jump in with that because I, I created something probably two or three years ago called the 555 method. 
And this was a, the 555 methods when we were busy and didn't have time for lead gen and we're busy doing a million other things. So the basic concept is every day you call, speak to five people from your database. And then the very next month, you take those exact same five people and you go on to their social media page and you interact in some way, shape or form. You leave a question, you know, hey, say shell, you know, uh, happy anniversary. By the way, that picture of you guys is great. I love it. You guys are laughing and you're up at the altar. That's, that's so cool. And then she's going to like that post and she's going to reply back. Oh yeah. Nick said something really funny and I started laughing and blah, 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 whatever. And that's it. And I'm going to say, well, I hope you and the family are doing well. Talk to you soon. And then I'm immediately 30 days later going to send her a text message or a handwritten note and say, you know, Hey, say show. I was just in your neighborhood the other day with buyers thinking about you guys, hope you and the family are doing well, talk to you soon. So what did I just say in that text message? I said, I'm in real estate, I have buyers, I'm local, I know your market, I care about you and your family. If you know anybody looking to sell, I've got buyers. If you know anybody looking to, to buy, I work here. Like all that stuff is impacted. And now on month four, I go back to a phone call. So now every single month I'm connecting. So this is where frequency matters, right. frequency and consistency. The reason it's the same five people on January 1st as February 1st as March 1st is because that's how I stay consistent. When I wake up, I look at my smart plan and it says, here are the five people you need to call today. Here are the five people you need to social media touch. And here are the five people you need to text. That's it. And I don't have to think about, Oh, who do I call? Who haven't I reached out to in a while? It's all set up for you already do it. So yeah, that's been a massive that. change. And now with as much time we have, mm -hmm. maybe it's a 15, 15, 15 or 25, 25, 25. I don't know. We've got the time. Now is the time to use it. I yeah. love that. So how are you going about deciding who you're going to call or reach uh, out? To? Great question. So First of I all, that one from you, Jenny? Sorry. Uh, go ahead. We're good. <laughs> so, so first of all, you have to understand that the people we're calling are people that know us, like us, trust us. They've used us for a transaction or they've referred a transaction to us. Either one works. So this is somebody that if you walk into the grocery store, you're like, oh, hey, how are you? How's the family? That's the kind of connection you have with them. Okay. It's not all your internet leads and all the other stuff, open house leads and all that. These are people who know you like you, trust you, have done business with you in some way, shape or form. So that group is typically much smaller than our, our entire database. So let's say you have 325 people. Let's, let's say that's how many people you have in your past clients. That 325, five a day for three months, guess how much that is? 325. 325 people. So when you say, well, who do I call first? I don't care. Call anybody out of that 325. And when you reach them, cross them off the list because they're already in the system now. Day two, just keep calling till you hit five. As soon as you have conversations with five people, they get put on the next list and then they're already set up. And every single day, your 325 will slowly dwindle and you'll know exactly who you need to call. But at the end of 30 days, it'll pop up, hey, call five new people, but also go on social media and touch these five people from last month. So by the time you get through about 90 days worth of this, your lead generation takes care of itself. Every morning, all you do is wake up and say, who are the five I call? Who are the five I social media touch? Who are the five I text? Love that. Awesome. Well, let me ask this question. Let's say that we have a database that over the past week and say next week, we get through all of our Mets or those that we have to call. What's next? All right. So if you get through all of that that quickly, you're usually means you're, you're newer in the market or you, you don't have as many past clients and right. stuff like that. And that's completely normal. So your goal is I still need people that know, know me, like me and trust me. Yeah. So if you would ask the gen, an, an average person, how many people in the world are trustworthy? The average person says 40%. When you ask that exact same person, how many people do you know that are trustworthy? That number jumps up to 70%. So what we're finding out is the average person who doesn't know you doesn't trust you. 60% of people are untrustworthy. 
Yet, when we start talking to people, we start connecting with people, all of a sudden, everybody trusts us. So you've got to start with people who know you, like you, and trust you. Yeah, this is a, a fun success story. We have a newer agent on our team, and uh, she has one under contract already, and she just set a buyer consult today uh, to do virtually. And both of those came from our database. Ooh. Old leads. Guess what she's doing? She's calling people. She's saying, hi, how are you? Just checking in. That's it. I mean, this is yeah. it. This is the, this can happen, and they're already in there. Don't need to pay for leads. They're already no, you, don't, you really don't. You know, and for me, I always look at the path of least resistance. I think Nick gave you a great 555 for the people that you know. The, the next part, if, I, if I've run through my entire list and I'm looking for the next set of people who I don't know, I'm going to go look for the influencers in communities. Mm -hmm. And so what I started doing was um, once a year committing to going deep into a community. So I started out with like a local CEO group, right, called Vistage. And it has 16 local CEOs. We've had 45 deals now come out of that in three years. Right. You look at um, our local PTA. Right. I joined our um, strategic planning board for the local school because we didn't know anybody at the local school yet. Right. And so the year before she went there for elementary, I started strategically attending those meetings of the key 20 people in the school. Right. The principal, the PTA president, the school board trustee. Right. The head teachers. Right. I wanted to know the influencers in that community. I didn't just want to go attend the fundraiser. I wanted to know who was planning the fundraiser, right? Mm -hmm. You look at like Amplify that we created, which were 11 women around the country. And now we're almost 300 of us coming in September together, right? It was all about creating community and asking questions of how do, how do I get to influential people inside of a space? And I don't need to know everybody, but if I could just commit to one a year, one group a year that I can add into my arsenal that I'm getting to know, right? How can that change my trajectory? Another example of that is like on, I mean, we all live in a community and we're all homebound right now, right? You could deliver in gloves, handwritten notes to all of your neighbors. They're all home, right? Yeah. We planned a block party for our entire neighborhood for October. Don't cough Nobody on Nobody is answering their door right now. You don't have to, you don't have to ring the doorbell, slip a little note in there. Hey, right. virus free, read this. I like <laughs> it. Have my six year old write it. It's going to be cute handwriting. You're totally going to open that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but my point is you can get creative around building community. Like we have local business owners that need more support than ever right now. Like our mm -hmm. local flower shops are like, we had one of our local media companies pivoted completely and went from fabricating media displays and like event equipment to hospital grade equipment. Mm. Right. And they're doing um, like all the privacy tents now um, that they can do quickly for like screening tents. Um, and they're also building the uh, shields for the Face doctors shields. that yep. people are out of right now. And so he sent an email yesterday going, I don't know if anybody could use help with this, but we can fabricate these quickly and get them out into the local community. So it's a great example to reach out to all of our influencers that are healthcare workers, doctors, social workers, right? Are you short on supplies? Let me connect you and be a resource. But I think that's where um, getting out of the box and thinking through who are the influencers and how can we make an impact, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden can become very strategic and purposeful and be an additional layer to your business. Now, are you also sharing those six, those amazing stories with your database and and your social sites. How are you doing that? We're doing a monthly newsletter and then we're doing um, about every two days of a social media post, whether it's we've gone virtual, right? And here's all the virtual ways we can help you or myth busters that are gonna help us overcome objections, which is a video series we launched last week or whether it's um, stats, right? We kind of have like our every day, you have your seven things that are going out and you time them to business in the morning and more fun and playful in the evening. Yeah. Right? Like and I think that's the key is you can't be work, 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 work. It'll get buried in the algorithm and no one will ever look at it. Yep. Thank God I have a little son who's semi cute. And I just put him on things all the time to keep people watching. And then I pop in some real estate stuff and people are like, oh, he got me again. All right, let me read this real quick. Well, and that's, that's, we have a three to one formula on that. It's three things personal to one. Oh, by the way, we're really freaking good at real estate, right? I thought it was a three to one taco. Well, tacos one of my three because I get three tacos. taco posts for every other post. <laughs> right, I live in Texas. Now you think about Texas and tacos every time you think of me, Nick Waldner, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right, Real so 
so I'm getting back to our story here. So we have now, <laughs> I, am, I regret this guys. <laughs> All right. So now we figured out what does and doesn't work. You guys are, are, are doing the work and you're ramping it up. So have you as a team, you know, Gary told us to double up, double down. So are you also having standards and, and accountability around that as a team? Are you reporting out your numbers at the end of the day? What's that look like? So for us, our 830 meeting that we you know, talk about what's relevant, we look at the facts and figures of the market, we understand where we are, we talk about objections from the day before so we know how to handle them moving forward, and then everybody on the team sets their goals. At 12 o'clock, we have another break, we do an hour education series, so whatever it might be, but it's always timely to what's going on right now, and then at 430, that's when our time to come back and say, all right, Seychelles, you said you were going to make 50 calls, 20 Facebook posts, or 20 Facebook connections, and two Facebook posts. How'd you do? And then she says how she did. And then I go to Jenny, and, then, and we just go through the entire list like that. And if somebody didn't get their goal, I say, well, what happened? What, you know, what do you think stopped you today that you can overcome tomorrow? Well, are you guys on a group Zoom at this point? Every, yeah, that 8.30, uh, 12, and 4.30 are all, all Zoom because we want to be able to see each other, especially right now. we got a lot of high eyes. We've got to have some visual. So we have that conversation, and we, it's not like – we're not the standard, like, you didn't hit your numbers and blah, blah, blah. You set your goals, and then, tomorrow, and then today we decide how you did on your goals. And, you yeah. know, I crushed it. I think tomorrow I'm going to do 60 or – you know, I just really struggled because I'm watching my daughter and, and she's running around and I'm the only person taking care of them. I might make my goal next week or tomorrow, 25. I'm okay with that as long as you're setting a goal. As long as you're setting a goal and working towards something, that's what I want to see. Are you guys making calls yourself? Yes. Well, in between all these Zooms, I try. <laughs> but I have an entire list of people that I was like, all right, who do I need to call? I mean, this is a scrunched up piece of paper, not a database, but this is people that I'm like, these are people in my database that I need to reach out to, that I need to talk to, that I need to have that conversation. You know, one guy runs the Almond Center, which is a cancer uh, support group. And I called him to say, what are you missing? What do you need? Like, I have a list of people that in between anything like this, I'm on the phone call and doing the exact same yep. thing. So Nick, what's your goal? And when are you gonna have that done by? <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's exactly. <laughs> My goal is to do really well at this and then uh, hopefully Josh Anderson will write something really nice about me on, uh, on Facebook. I doubt that would ever happen, so. <laughs> Seychelle, what were you gonna say? Did you, are you also doing the same with your team zooming? Yeah, you know, we've been fortunate. Um, uh, we have two of our team members that have been virtual for a really long time. So we've had our team on Zoom for years. Um, and so our 8.30 uh, script practice is when we start with 8.30 script practice, 9 o'clock we hit the phones, 10.30 is when our huddle is. Um, and we do, like, because an hour lead gen is already either over or almost over. So we're already reporting in what were your numbers for today, how many contacts, leads, appointments, you know, contracts. And then what do you have, what's your one thing for the rest of the day, and what are you thankful for? And we do that at the end. Um, and then we roll to the next day. But it's kind of weird right now because everyone's captive, so we just kind of turn off our camera, and then we turn it back on because we're all still there. So <laughs> um, <laughs> we're like, okay, bye. Just like turn it off for a second, and everyone comes back. Um, but it's, it, it, this is just going to, this market's going to require you to be more creative. It's going to require more grit. And Nick started off the call with this, and I think it's a great way to focus in. It's going to be the speed of which you move and implement, whether it's your idea or somebody else's, does not matter. It's the speed of which you implement the idea that's going to determine your success. So, Seychelle, I know that you guys are on house arrest, <laughs> as we should say. There is Alice. And so we know that we're making, okay, we're in the relationship business. That doesn't get shut down. We can still have relationships and make them and deepen them. How are you handling your appointments? I know everybody's talking about the virtual world. And are you adjusting your goals per week, setting appointments and, and, and such? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the goal is the goal. Okay. Right. So we just have to get creative on how we're doing it. So we've moved Dallas's shelter in place and they have decided as of yesterday that showings and um, open houses are non-essential. 
So, um, I mean, literally it is like lockdown central over here. So, you know, for us, that means a couple of things. That means that showings have to be done virtually. We've adjusted even the way we're writing our contracts to where um, our inspection period is really short with a very small amount of money out first for the buyer. And we get the home under contract with a like virtual walkthrough. And then you have two or three days to physically see the home. Then additional you know, money gets exchanged and you do your full inspection. So we're getting really creative to remove the risk and the objection for the buyer and the seller of, well, the buyer hasn't seen the home. How do they know they want to buy it? Or, well, I haven't seen the home. How do I know I want to buy it? Right? So we, we have to eliminate those objections and, and pare down the risk because um, I think that's the only way we're going to be able to get through that. So I'm excited because it's forcing us to be creative. It's forcing us to be more time efficient. And I think there's going to be a lot of this that we're adapting and adjusting in our business that we plan on keeping actually as an added service opportunity and offering for our clients. That's actually one of my questions. What are you guys going to keep after this? Are you finding that we're so much more efficient? Yes. Loving this. I don't think yeah. I ever want to go to an office again. I know. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm like hanging out in my jams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what would be some things that you have really enjoyed that you think you'll keep along after this? We're going to keep the virtual option. As for us, I think. Yeah. Yeah. For anybody who can't make it into a team meeting, when we do our morning huddles, like I think our, our accountability that we've done in the beginning, the end of every day has been tremendous. We, we put out a scorecard every single day to show if you have any past due reminders, how many people you added to your database, all that stuff. And we look at that every single day. We used to look at it once a week. So now I, I've realized the value of having all that information and talking about it over and over and over again. Love it. Okay, so we, I think, as teams and, and having good momentum, probably already we were coming into this season anyway, where we had a good running head start on all this. Um, what if you're an agent that's a single agent or, or didn't knock it out of the park last fall where you're, you're ramped up for future success? What would you say to them to get in the path of business? So, Shell, you want this one or you want me to take it? I mean, I think it's going to be, you have to decide if you are going to be in this business. Mm -hmm. You can't not decide. Like this is the time you either are the have or the have not. So yeah. you are going to have business and thrive and move through this, or you are not going to have it. And if you're deciding I am going to be here and I'm going to be in business, then it's your job to be here, show up, get ready every day, get your mindset right and choose to stay in business and be the leader, whether it's leading yourself, leading your family or leading your team, you have got to lead yourself through this. And who you surround yourself is gonna make all the difference. Yeah, definitely agree with that. So I, I don't know about you ladies, but there have been weekends where I've had a tub and a half of ice cream, about a dozen chocolate chip cookies, maybe a brownie, maybe some M&Ms. And at the end of the weekend, I feel thousand pounds heavier. I'm so disappointed with myself. And then Monday, I have a really healthy day. I eat well all day. Will I get skinnier by Tuesday? Mm, no, no, not at all. Okay. And there's nothing, there's nothing different here. If you tell me, Hey, I didn't really kill it for January and February. So I'm kind of feeling it in March. I'm going to tell you, okay, well, if you don't kill it in March and April, you're going to feel it in May and June. So yeah. You have to understand when we start first start working out, we don't start seeing abs until week 12. Or when we start eating healthy, we don't notice a change in our clothes until like week 12. It's the same thing. We know that consistently eating healthy, consistently working out, we're going to see the results and we know it's in the future and we're like prepared that. for that. But too many people come into real estate and they're like, okay, I got my license. Where's my first deal? Uh-uh. Yeah. Wow. I've taken a lot of notes from our time here together. I can see on Facebook if anybody is watching and they have questions that they want to ask, we have a tiny bit more time. Is there anything else that you guys are really proud of, your teams or your community that that you're doing that you're really just thriving through this time because of? 
I'm honestly, you know, it's something we don't think about now, but I'm honestly so thankful that this is happening in an era that we have technology in order to be able to allow us the opportunity to get through this. Because I think about when we went through this in 08, at least is when it hit Dallas, we had like e-fax and Blackberry pearls. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like. I remember those days. I mean, no DocuSign. Like you just, you have to think about like how fortunate we are to be in a time where speed of information, speed of communication, and like we already have the book shift. We hadn't written that last time. Like that one didn't exist. We had to write it in the middle of it because we were flying and building the plane. Like how fortunate are we that we have that information and those tools and that technology that we can still actually do business and execute 11 contracts or nine contracts, you know, since this has all gone on, like we, we would be up a creek if this had happened 12 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at, if you look at what we're using to get through this, is anything brand new? It was, did no. Zoom just come out last week? Right. No, like all this stuff was there and we were ignoring it because we were running around like crazy people. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, now I have all this stuff to make me more efficient. Yeah. Well, I have to use it because I'm not stuck in my home. I'm safe in my home. So change your mindset there. I'm safe in my home. And now I still have all these different avenues and methods to be able to connect and, and really deepen my relationship with people without being in front of them. Mm -hmm. So something I want to um, touch on real quick before we end our time. Um, our mindset really matters. Yeah. And um, you guys are leaders and you must, what are you pointing to? <laughs> to me, that's Seychelle. Oh, okay. <laughs> so me, not so much. That's you, that's mine. All right. So let's pretend that you're a leader and um, you're, you know, going through this as well. Personally, with your families, we're all having these new challenges and uh, opportunities at the same time. What's just some of your um, suggestions and ideas for people to really keep their, their head and heart strong during this time? All right, I'm, I'm gonna jump in, Seychelle. I'm gonna tell you this. This is the time that leaders shine. Mm -hmm. We don't need leadership when everything's great and everything's going fantastic. We need leaders who are gonna step up when it's rough, when we don't know where we're going, when the seas are all over, this is the time where your leadership creates people willing to follow you. So if you're in the corner and you're worried and you're fearful and you have a lot of emotion or you're trying to numb what's going on by eating too much, drinking too much, sleeping too much, whatever it is, no one's going to follow you and you're going to fail as a leader. You've got to make traction. So. I live up in, uh, in Maryland where we have snow and things like that. And when your car gets caught in the snow and your tires start spinning, you don't worry about driving a mile. You worry about getting an inch, an inch, yeah. an inch, an inch. And eventually your tires hit pavement and now you're off and running. So right now as a leader, your entire focus should be how do I get a little bit of traction mm -hmm. every day? I agree with that. Hey, I called 25 people in my, in my uh, database and, you know, from past leads. And I found one that said, yeah, probably in the next six months, we do want to buy. That's traction. And it's traction every day. And all of a sudden, you'll look up one day and you'll be zooming along at 60 miles an hour because you got the traction you were working towards. Yeah. And we've all been in business long enough to know I'm at 19 years and we've all been here long enough that we know that it's time on the task over time. It's fortunate yeah. in the follow-up because you see, you get that phone call to come with me from a past client of eight years ago that's never answered or returned your phone calls or replied to your emails, and then yet they appear. So we know that this is just continuing those relationships. It's a, it's a consistency too. And I, I think, Nick, you're, you're inch over inch. I, what I wrote down on mine was win the day today. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about tomorrow, just win today. I just need to win today and then tomorrow I can worry about tomorrow. But if I don't win today, tomorrow doesn't matter. And, you know, I, I think about the script too that's really important for our team, which is as leaders, we need to have the script of here's what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Ready. And that's where relying on a great network, just like you're doing here today, Jenny, of other people that have lived before us, have seen the world before us. 
Um, we need to understand that others have lived before us in this. So who you listen to matters and understanding what's going to happen next, even if it's not the right answer, having an answer is better than nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wendy Papazan gave me some good advice um, with some challenges we faced earlier this year. And one thing that she said to me when I called her, I said, what did you, last year you had a lot of adversity. What did you do really well? What did you wish you would have done differently? Right. And, and some advice she gave me was she said, I woke up in the morning and I put on my armor and my armor was so thick that no one could penetrate it. And I wish I had been more vulnerable and real in the moment because I think as leaders, it's also important sometimes to acknowledge and stop and just take a minute and breathe and say, we're in a, we're in a funky moment right now. But the good news is we have a plan. The good news is this is what's going to happen next. The good news is this is where we're going to go. And I think I think we have to be careful not to be um, so cavalier, and I don't, I don't think any of us are at risk of this on this call, but I, I think we have to be very careful not to be so cavalier that everything's just fine, 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 that people start thinking you're delusional, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, what planet are you living on? Dallas is under lockdown, right? We're safe in our home. Thank you, Nick. Um, but, I, you know, we have to acknowledge that, okay, we are safe in our homes and we have to figure out our reality next of what we're going to do. And so being real and, and authentic in that and also giving good news can be one and the same. Yeah. And that goes with our conversations. When we say, hey, how are you? We're right. going to get a lot of how's the real estate market. If yes. you paint it like the most beautiful picture that's ever been created, right. yeah. they don't believe you. So you've got to be honest. Like, wow, you know, things have certainly changed for our business. We've had to pivot in a few different ways. We found ways to do things that we couldn't do three months ago. Yep. And to be honest, it's actually made us more efficient. We're actually yep. selling more houses. We got this, 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 this. It's really been incredible. Yes. I've, got to, I've got to relate that, yes, there's a big, massive problem and we had to change. But then I can take you back up to where we went with it yep. and not leave you thinking that we're struggling or, or you know, not yeah. doing what we need to do. Yeah. And, you know, this is so good um, where you can't always control your first thought, right? But you can control your second. Tacos, tacos, tacos. Margaritas. Oh, wait, no. Tacos, tacos. <laughs> <laughs> but you can control your second. And so I think sometimes as a leader, you feel that moment of a, right? We have, like, I look back at our last shift, we were a lot smaller. Our overhead was a lot smaller. I am mm. determined, right? We have a team that we want to keep that are great. Like, I, I don't want to get rid of any of them. <laughs> They're great. So we're going to cut everything expense wise around that first before we even look at any human capital because they're amazing. Um, you know, and, and I look at that and I, I carry that on my heart and I carry that on my shoulders. I can feel it in my upper back every day. I feel like we have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of overhead every year that we have got to build business to support. It's a motivator, but I think there are times as a leader, if I'm being real, right, that you feel that like, oh my gosh, it's a lot to carry. Um, and I think making sure that we are real in the moment that that can be a feeling that you're going to feel, but controlling the action and the attitude that you take out of that is what's going to determine where you go. It can be a debilitator or it can be a motivator. And we have no time right now other than to have that motivate us into productivity. So as we wrap up here, um, I want to talk about lastly, um, you're still treating this like a full-time job. You're still showing up every day with a time blocked calendar. You're following your schedule and you're, we're also all parents and have our kids and spouses in the other rooms. So how are you working through that counterbalance and what is your day? What's your, what's your time block calendar look like? So my wife is texting me three times. Stop screaming. <laughs> Maybe that's us cackling. Cause we have a, we have our Jack sleeping Jack. upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's funny, like, I, I said this from day one, like, we are all in it together. When Quinn runs through the background, or Nick's getting Legos, or Jack runs in here, or you're on a, a virtual call with 19,000 people, and your wife sets the smoke detector off like, like me, like, that's life. And we just seem to embrace it and roll with it and be okay with it. And if Jack ran in right now, I'd pick him up and he would stare at the screen and I would just hold him and we'd keep talking. I think we all have to embrace the reality of where we are and just be okay with it. Yeah, kids are going are gonna to interrupt and yeah, we're going to hear stuff in the background and 
it's just that's just part of it and it's it's actually what bonds us all together because we're yeah. all dealing with the exact same thing yeah i i actually kind of i kind of love it it's um nick is also working full-time too you thank you you are working full-time this is this is such a yes all the time <laughs> we i we get i got people messaging me last night asking if we were married because i posted about our anniversary and i was like because i i, I was like nick and i'm like no no not that nick the other nick my well that nick. was weird that you you put that picture up tagged me and then put my my photo in there and i was mm. i mean you know <laughs> emily's fine with it it's fine we're just one big happy for people it's great um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, are you glad you invited us on here, Jenny? I'm so excited. I didn't even know that this pairing was so special. <laughs> That's um, why you were so excited to do it together. Uh -huh. Yeah, we were like, perfect. We, we can do this. We know each other really well. <laughs> like, we're married. Um, but no, Nick Nick does have a full-time job, right? Like, he's, he has crews that he has to run. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he has been over and above helpful where I can focus in winning the morning so that in the afternoon I can help cover him so he can line up crews for the next day for the next mm -hmm. remodel. And so it's just a, you know, it's a, it's a juggle. I'm, I'm starting work at, you know, five, six o'clock. I'm head down working because that's just mm -hmm. what we need to do. Normally that would be more meditation time and more me time, but not right now. It's work time. We, so that we, have to, we just have to adapt. I love it. Any final thoughts or words you want to share? I'm just really thankful for doing these, Jenny. It's awesome. Oh, thank you guys for saying yes. And now I know that not only is Nick Wolner the man who loves The Bachelorette, he also is the man with so many analogies. Do you I, I don't love The Bachelorette as much as I love The Bachelor. I, 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 mean, I, I, I confuse him because I don't know. That. She meant it. <laughs> Whatever it's called. I only watched it after you told me about it. <laughs> So anyway, what else do you guys have for your final words? I know that so many people are watching along and oh, Cindy what we says that it's been her favorite Zoom. So nice. So, so Cindy, here's my here's my piece of advice for you and everybody who's watching these. There is so much education being thrown out there right now for all of us. And I think that's amazing. I think that's really great. But what I can tell you is you still have to take action every day. Yeah. So you set your time blocking of when you're taking your action and then you can set your time blocking as far as when you're going to look for education or look for Zooms or videos or anything to be on. You're inundated with these things. I don't want you watching five or six of these a day. I want you to watch one a day mm -hmm. after you did your 50 contacts in the morning. Then you can watch one and then your afternoon has something else going on. Yeah. So just make sure that we're not over educating ourselves and not taking enough action. The action is going to do more for you in the end than anything. So thank you for watching and thank you for being a part of it. I know Seychelles is great, but we got to actually take action too. You're so right. We can't, we can't be all in education all day long. We got to get into action for sure. What do you got? Yep. You know, I think the, the other piece that um, I struggled with for a long time and I'm becoming a lot more comfortable with is giving yourself permission to also live your life while also working. I have, I struggle with that counterbalance, um, particularly after becoming a mom. I think it was a lot easier when you have limitless amounts of energy and time and no kids, right? But now you have early bedtime, early dinner, or, you know, like your, your time gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And so giving yourself permission to get in and get your work done and be really, really, really focused and efficient with your time and respect it and get it done. And then give yourself permission to go live life. Um, and I think even now that's going to be so important because for a lot of people, their work, their office, their family, their play is all in one space and it's going to bleed all over each other. So giving yourself permission to own that and still live, is going to be really important too. I think that's a great note to, to end on. You guys want a virtual high five? Let's do this. Boom. Thank you guys for your time. Th thanks to all you who have watched. I just sped up these, um, what were supposed to be monthly um shift book clubs and uh for some reason i needed to move them up a little faster because we need the content a little bit more and there's tons of good things to be learning and watching and again just get into action that's the most important thing and appreciate you guys i'll talk Thanks to you for having us.